How do I even begin this? <sighs> there's two parts to this. First, there's an interesting matter of public record, uh, which has again dropped. And this is another um, transcript from the Child Protective Services case um, that Rikeda is involved in. And I'll just read the synopsis here from Autistic Right again. Uh, Miss Barber, who is one of the, the Health and Human Services employee, believes that the children cannot be returned to their home because it is unsafe as of June 6th. She states that allowing the grandparents to move into Rikeda's Coombe Dungeon is a, quote, creative solution, though licensing might be complicated and the grandparents need substance awareness training. Um, they don't know how the drugs got into Baldo's home and how the child tested positive. Baldo was cooperative and attending in the, to the home visit with Miss Barber. She was able to enter the Coombe Den, the master bedroom, and she was uh, had a peek at the master bathroom and stated that there was a pug being kept there. So for whatever reason, their pet pug named Sonny is kept in the bathroom. Um, she says that Constance's usage assessments that return negative results will expedite the reunification process. But as we discussed during the Bossman Jack segment, Ricardo is unable to produce those, apparently. Um, Ricardo's side filed that they would prefer um, custody, I think in this order, A, the kids just return home, B, the kids move in with the grandparents, three, unsupervised visits overnight with the parents, um, and four, similar to three, but the with the supervision of the grandparents, or five, some other arrangement. Um, they are trying desperately to suppress the hair follicle test of the nine-year-old testing positive for cocaine metabolites. Um, they actually accuse Miss Barb. Oh, sorry, Miss Barb is not Health and Human Services. She's a guardian ad litem, um, which is a fancy term for someone who acts in the interest of the child who is not directly from the government. So this is a person who volunteers for this, usually undergoes some kind of training, and then will interact with the children and talk to them on behalf of the court to try and make a determination in their interest and represent what they believe um, is best and what the children have told them and so on and so forth. Um, and part of the reason why they're pissed off that the guardian ad litem, Ms. Barber, uh, should be dismissed is that she accessed the hair follicle test results. So she's trying to assess what to do with the kids and in the process of doing that, obtain the results of the chromiography, proving that there were met uh, cocaine metabolites in her hair. And they're saying that that somehow um, predisposes her to harsher considerations about Arikata, um, even though it doesn't seem to be the case. They moved to suppress public access to the case because Rikata is a public figure. Um, and they bitched about releases of other documents. Uh, Baldo and Rikeda, the wife, want the following. Records pertaining to the hair follicle test, Omega Laboratory instrument printouts of promatograms. Now, this is a weird one. Um, I don't know what the fuck a promatogram is. I think that he means the, the chromiograph. or the, I, I'm not sure what they're asking for. I don't know if that's a thing. Can I just search this real quick? Uh, chromio chromatography. Chroma chromatography. That's a hard word. I don't know what a protomogram is, though. It does show up, though, so it must be relevant. Maybe it's just another name for it. Uh, the controls, the operating procedure. They basically are trying everything they can to find out how to get this evidence dismissed for being inaccurate. Um, I don't know if that's going to work out for them, though. And then, of course, this ugly hoe. Uh, seeds about the Kiwi Farms in the chat. Fuck Kiwi Farms and Josh. That would be me. Okay. So that's just a brief court update regarding them. Now, I should explain that after Tuesday, someone told me uh, in the Ricardo thread, just threw out there, it says, Josh, you're probably not going to get the body cam footage. Now, I don't like being told that I can't do something, especially when I really, 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 really want something. So when he said this, I decided to actually personally review the statutes regarding the Minnesota release of body cam footage. And I found a very interesting point that I believe might allow us to get 
some of the body cam footage um, because we very strictly meet the criteria. Effectively, the sheriff's office of Candy, Ohio County is at liberty to release body cam footage to dispel rumors, which is not a very high bar to meet. There simply has to mean that there is a widespread rumor which can be dispelled to the benefit of public trust in law enforcement by the release of the body cam footage. And this is a very different burden than other burdens because, number one, we don't have to actually have Ricada consenting to anything or saying anything too stupid himself. As long as there is a rumor to be dispelled that would be benefited by the release of the body cam footage, then we can try to justify it through that angle. And to our benefit, um, Ricada has been in the, not saying too much publicly about the police or the health and human services, especially when it comes to the date of the search. But Ricada has been in the ear of other people. Notably, Robert Barnes, uh, who was an attorney on the Rittenhouse trial. Um, Viva Fry, a YouTuber with over 600,000 subscribers. Camelot, another YouTuber. Even Ethan Ralph. Because these people all have stated repeatedly that there is corruption in Candy, Ohio County. Uh, Viva Fry went out and said that the search was... And Robert Barnes said that the search was in parts instigated by a probable cause warrant that shouldn't have been allowed, but was allowed because, as Viva Fry said, that Nick Ricada was a the most vocal critic of the local government and what he called that corrupt shithole. And so they went after him, and they went at, after him in apparently the dirtiest way possible by going after his kids. And... These are things that have been repeated or heavily implied by Ricada himself. There's clips on the Chrissy Meyer show where he's talking about how, you know, you would be surprised what you have in your house, implying that he didn't know that he had cocaine or that. Um, and Chrissy Meyer immediately asked, because it's the obvious implication that the police or uh, that um, Nick even said something about you don't know what police might bring into your house. Very obviously implying and insinuating that the police of the uh, of the county brought cocaine into his home, Chrissy Meyer actually asked immediately, because that's the obvious second follow-up question, like, are you saying that that's what happened? And then Ricada says no. But that's the thing, is, like, he's creating this thought that there that there is malfeasance, there is wrongdoing, that... And people are believing it. Chrissy Meyer immediately suspects that the police, have, uh, his friend uh, suspects that... Police brought drugs into the house. Robert Barnes talks about the corruption. Viva Fry um, says that it's a corrupt shithole, and they're going after him. Uh, his friend Camelot is is uh, indicating that the police force did something wrong and that the, the warrant was unjust. And if you were looking at this from a neutral perspective, if you weren't me and you weren't someone who knew who Ricada was, but you knew that this guy was getting eaten by the system, was having his kids taken away from him, was facing 25 years for a very serious possession charge, and you were hearing all these associates around him making this claim that the police were up to something, that Health and Human Services was lying under oath, then you would think that this was an innocent man telling anybody who he could who he could trust in private that he is a victim and he was trying to scream as loud as he possibly could in a way that wouldn't cause retribution because they got his kids and they can go after him they have that leverage over him if you didn't know Ricada and if you didn't know and if you weren't me and you were just trying to assess the facts and what people are saying you would assume that he was desperately trying to get someone to listen to him about how he was being treated, and he was just afraid to do so in public. That's how it would look like to me. So, I genuinely, genuinely, with no extension of the truth, no backward justification, it's very obvious that he has created a rumor that can be addressed, and the question is, can that be addressed? The question then is not that if there's a rumor about um, an interest of, of public trust. The question is, is there a rumor that can be dispelled 
by the body cam footage, which were coincidentally after anyways, right? Well, yes, because um, Robert Barnes names in particular a specific cop um, who he claims um, did something did something wrong. And there's a clip of this, and I'll pull it up if I have to. But he names a cop um, specifically who happens to be there on the day of. And it's like we don't need dozens of hours of footage from every which way. But we know that there's a specific cop who is there executing the search warrant who has been accused by people directly associated with Nick Riccata of doing something wrong. So how about this? Let's see the footage from that one badge cam, and let's see the footage of everybody in the master bedroom where the cocaine was found. Because if there is anybody planting cocaine with all those cops there, we should be able to see it. And if that one cop was doing anything wrong, then his badge cam would show it. And that way... There's a, there's a middle ground. You're not releasing everything. You can censor out all the kids. It's just one cop, one area of the house of interest to the public. And that was my post. Um, so I, I don't feel like there's anything wrong with that. I don't feel like I said anything wrong. I'm not lying. I'm not being uh, uh, deceitful. That is genuinely the facts of the situation in a way that the county can meet me halfway and provide information to dispel a rumor, as indicated by statute. And Riqueda's response to this, um, despite being someone who really does proclaim that um, he is up against an unfair system, immediately contacted me my signal. And when he does this, I usually just paraphrase him, because I, I figure the reason why he's addressing me in private is that he wants me to say, to pass along a message to the Kiwi Farms, but at the same time, I don't want to copy his words word for word because then it's like we have a we have a time limit on our messages. So it's like if he is, if I quote him directly, that might get him into trouble. So I'm, I, I am when I paraphrase him, I'm not trying to to cause him any harm. I'm trying to pass along his message, and at the same time create a an air gap where nothing he's saying about his case can be used against him. I'm not trying to, to be mean. I'm not trying to misrepresent what he says. I'm genuinely trying to help him accomplish his goal while minimizing his risk, which is something that I do a lot. If someone has a message for my forum and I want to post it and talk about it, I'll have them message me. We'll discuss what they want to talk about. I will create a uh, summary of it, and then I'll publish the summary. And then I'll say, I know that this is true. I can't show you how I know this is true, but you know I generally don't lie about things. Um, and I uh, hope that you'll trust me when I say that I looked at this and I was very convinced and this is what I saw. And that's a way, a roundabout way that I have used over years to allow people who want to uh, be whistleblowers but limit their own exposure uh, do so more safely. And I'm simply extending that same courtesy to Rakeda. Um, if he wanted to join the forum and post himself, I could accommodate that as well. If he had nothing to say to me, then what's then why then why rate me? But I I um I think he got pissed off because what what happened is when I summarized this set of messages, I said that um he wished me luck and he dared me to find rumor mongering that would implicate the police and wrongdoing, especially in regards to the search warrant. And I say that he, he dared me because he basically says, like he said very flippantly, please go find this video, which to me is a dare. You tell me, go do something, <laughs> implying that I won't be able to. I'm like, um, okay, <laughs> challenge accepted, right? So I said that he dared me and he wished me luck in finding these, this footage because effectively it was a dare. Um, so then I hear the news because I, I get fucking messages from people saying that he's live reading all of my DMs, which was my first reaction was what a fucking idiot. Cause in these DMs, I don't say anything incriminating. I repeatedly call him out on being narcissistic and a pathological fucking liar who is blatantly trying to manipulate me and failing. Like that's, uh, that's how I remember these conversations. He comes at me with a message. I tell him, I don't fucking believe you. You're a liar. This is bullshit. And I know that you're lying and I can prove it. And then he says, go good luck. <laughs> <laughs> so when I hear that he's reading my messages, I'm thinking like, is he trying to own me? Cause I don't fucking say anything in these that are incriminating. So 
So now I have this video, and it is like an hour long. It's an hour long of him talking about my private messages to him and from him to me on Signal. Um, and I'm just going to watch him, and I'm going to try to watch what I say because he's trying to bait me into saying something wrong. Um, but I'm right, pretty, here we go. pretty confident in my ability to avoid problems. Let's see this. Actually, can I get his chat up? Because apparently his chat might be interesting. Okay. So I'll give you my, uh, let's give my, my update as best I can. Now, please understand that I have ongoing court issues. They're not done. The state is not done with me yet. He says that, um, he's trying, but... One of the things that he does in this is that he tries to say that he got his kids back. He was given a trial visitation with supervision. And he tries to make that sound like his chips case is completely closed, and it's not. Because if it was closed, imagine this. If he was still in custody of his children, this is one of those things that he does where he tries to present one thing so that people who interpret it favorably hear what he wants them to hear. But then if someone who isn't interpreting him favorably calls him out on that, he just goes, whoa, buddy, that's not what I said. And it's, it's like manipulative fucking asshole one-on-one, -on -one, 101, like most blatant, obvious, fucking duplicitous way of speaking imaginable. Um, Josh is, is either he paraphrases things incorrectly or he uses someone else's incorrect paraphrase as if it were true. And I think that's what's been going on. By the way, with he's, um, he's drinking a Monster Zero in this. So in solidarity... Just crack open a monster real quick, and we'll watch this properly. Yes, I've been saving this all stream. I've been eyeing it like, mm, mm, acid, caffeine. With him and me. And so I'm just going to show you the uh, messages. So this starts on Sunday, uh, Saturday, August 3rd. Um, he's talk he was talking about the body cam footage in my case. And people want me to like sign this release order or they want me to sign a consent form for the body cam footage in my case, which uh, I'm, I'm certainly not going to do at this point in time. And I'm, I'm not sure that it it ever be appropriate, but I'm not going to do it now or ever. <laughs> Just so you're not going to do it the fucking Weasley way. I don't really think that it would be in my interest at this current juncture for me to sign this waiver. And I don't think, actually, now that I think about it, I don't think it would ever be appropriate. <laughs> just say no. Just say I'm fucking, just be honest for once. Just say my house is a fucking wreck. My kids look sad and dirty. My bedroom is fucking humiliating to me. And that giant glistening crackarooski crack rock sitting on my mattress is a deep personal shame. I will never live down. I would rather drive a fucking nine inch nail through the palm of my left hand than have the general public have access to 12 hours from eight different body cam footages, every single nook and cranny of my dirty, filthy fucking house. Just be honest. Here you go. And people can, they can make all sorts of arguments or whatever, but, uh, that's fine. I'm not going to sit and argue with the internet about the propriety of that. You can call me whatever you want. It's, that's okay. But here's what I am going to do. I'm going to show you guys what I said to Josh because I think it's important. And I think it's really important to show you exactly what was said because what Josh said isn't true. So here we go. So, uh, okay. If he's going to do this, then I need to show you guys what I said. One second. Let me find this real quick. I don't want to make any mistakes on stream, but I'm going to pull up what I said on the Ricada thread. So, I mean, if he's, because I don't see him showing the post that I made anywhere. So that kind of deprives it of context. If my internet is willing to cooperate. Oh my god. Sorry, my poor website's fucking dying, I think. Maybe it's just that browser. I really don't know what the fuck's going on with that shit. 
Did, did, like, did they, like, wait for my uh, string to start to, like, start DDoSing or something? What the fuck is going on? Bro. This has to be, like, a problem. Oh, there it is. Okay. Sorry, this is, like, really important to the, um... To the actual discussion. And I don't know how you're gonna... Open up... With the, uh... Yes, they did. Chat is broken. Okay. So I started live streaming, and then they started fucking with the site. That sounds about right. Five oh two bad gateway. Oh, that's definitely a Okay, I'm getting closer, I'm getting closer. Okay, here we go. I say that and then I click the link and then it loads and everything's fine. Missive from the court of Baldo. King Baldo has again reached out through a system of ropes and pulleys to declare the following. He has never said the police did anything wrong during the execution of the search warrant on his premises and both daz me and wishes me luck in finding evidence to the contrary to support a petition to the Candy Ohio County Sheriff's Department. So I don't know what in particular he's up, upset with because that's what he fucking said. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's going to be super pedantic and, like, try to, like, split hairs. So I'm just not going to let him do that. I'll just ignore it if he's saying, like, oh, oh, oh. Like, I can't sum uh, it up in, like, three seconds. This. So this is um, Saturday, August 3rd, 9.53 p.m. I said, Sir Keckington says, hey, Josh, clip this for your epic show tomorrow, you retard. Thanks, Sir Keckington. I will. Hey, retard. Discovery is under protective order in the case. Me releasing it is a violation of that order. It's in the document you already have on your site, Learn to Read, which is the, uh, the order that was leaked a long time ago, mentioned specifically that uh, Discovery is under protective order in the case. It said, suggesting I should do anything to affirmatively move the needle on releasing it risks me violating a court order. Try reading. So again, really quickly. People on the farms or wherever want me to sign a consent form to release body cam footage that is part of both my criminal case and my civil case. Correct. But there's a protective order on discovery in the civil that case you, has since been sealed as well. That you asked for. He asked for the protective order, to be clear. Um, as far as I'm not, I, I'm obviously not an attorney, so I can't give you specifics. However, if Hardin thought that there would be any damage to his case, um, I don't think that he would have any issues with that objection. But as Ricardo said prior, it's uh, he doesn't think it would ever be in his interest to release the footage. So why be pedantic? Why say that there's this complex, circular, protective order that I requested and now it got approved and now I'm... I'm using as a defense to release evidence that's going to be released on another trial if it goes to court, uh, which is probably why, like, he might literally take a plea deal specifically because he doesn't want the body cam footage to become evidence in the criminal case, but it would come out there too. So um, there's a, there's a follow-up to this. I'll get to, because I mentioned it. Releasing that or moving to release that or making any step for it risks me violating a court order. Now you may argue, well, that's not violating a court order. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, when the government has you by the balls and by the balls, I mean, your literal offspring, you don't do anything to risk violating a court order, but it gets farther than that. It goes farther than that. And we're going to get to that as well, because this is an amazing thing that, uh, Josh's myopia forces him to overlook the reality that people are in, in the thirst for more and more infos or whatever. So, Josh. I want to see your dirty, filthy, fetid hovel. I want to see the dark confines of your home. I want to see the other room that, that the other rooms that you keep decrepit and, and dank. 
it's uh, that's all I want. <laughs> this is, I found this curious. He says we're not asking you to release it. This is funny because Kiwi Farms is not a monolith. I've said it a million times, but apparently they are now acting in concert, according to Josh. Okay, so he cries about this for 45 minutes. I already know what, he, what he's saying. I s use the royal we. Uh, um, I say, I'm going to try to blow this up so I can actually see what the fuck it says. I say, quoting myself, we're not asking you to release it. We're asking you to grant the government permission to release it. There is no issue with you signing a letter of consent. Your body cam footage is also a discovery of your criminal charge. It is part of the CHIPS case discovery, but it is part of the state's case and the criminal one. And he says, we. And I reply with a question mark because I am not wanting to entertain his bullshit pedantic linguistic tricks. The we in this re refers to me and my attorney, Matthew Hardin, who is licensed in the state of Minnesota to practice law. And unlike certain other people, he actively does practice law in the state of Minnesota. I am asking him not to go to the Kiwi farms and publish consent to release body cam footage. I am asking him to get into contact with my attorney, who is the second person in the we, to consent to this so that we can send it. We, me and him, can send it to the county to get it. Very easy. But for some reason, he um, apparently, from what I've been told, harps on and on and on about me and the Kiwi Farms being a single unit for like 50 fucking minutes, even though it should be obvious that he's responding to me asking him to send my attorney a consent. It's not me. He's, he's speaking on behalf of everyone now, I guess. We're not asking you to release it. We're asking you to grant the government permission to release it. There is no issue with you signing a letter of consent. Well, there are issues. We'll talk about them in a minute. Your body cam footage is also discovering your criminal charge. Great. It doesn't matter. If they're in both and one of them's under protective order, I'm certainly not fucking coming close to violating an order. Uh, it is part of the CHIPS case's discovery, but it's a part of the state's case in the criminal one. Okay, Josh, that's great. We, Lamau. Because when did Kiwi... Oh, find yeah. He also says we in Lamau. Become we. It says Lamau afterwards. I forgot that. I couldn't see that at the bottom. When was that? When was Kiwi Farms a we? Never. Does anybody? I've heard Josh say. <laughs> okay. Three, eight, five, zero. Can I get like a timer like live on the fucking thing? Let's see if I can do this. Text. Can I do this as a timer? I cannot. Is there some way? You know what? I'll just do it on my phone, chat. We'll just do it on my phone. Let's see. I know that this is apparently a big thing. Let's see how he long he actually talks about this. Stopwatch. Reset. Okay, here we go. A million times. The Kiwi Farms is just a website that people come to. It's not a collection of people acting in concert. Correct. Uh, it's it's anybody goes there and just gossips. But now it's we. Correct. It's very fun to me. Wrong. Because like, it's such a different Josh than I remember. Then he no. has a question mark because he doesn't get that he's just said we a whole lot. And so I, I go on. No one is asking. Josh refuses to fall into my pit trap, so I open my cock holster and I run my fucking gob for another 4,000 letters. Very cool. Asking me anything, and you're specifically ignoring just how monstrous of a machine court is. I tell you there's a protective order on discovery in a case where the government is concerned about the safety of children, and you want me to sign a release to show Kiwi Farms information about where those children live so it can be paraded in front of a group of infamous Hawkers. Now, that was my phone correcting gawkers to hawkers, but infamous gawkers. So you don't even listen to yourself and how absurd of a request that is. So you're not even quotes. It's a hypothetical, like a joke. It's a hyperbolic joke of what the judge would say to me if signing that consent form. Reminder that the state has your kids and they're like, well, we have concerns about parenting or whatever. And you're like, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to sign a release form so that these weirdos on the internet could just see where my kids live. Like, that sounds good. Right? Right? This is a weird point. Um, very briefly, the layout of his house is public record as well. I'm pretty sure that blueprints have to be filed with the county. 
uh, even outside of that, um, his Zillow listing for the house was public years ago, um, published on many different places, and that outlines where, where the house is. Um, I repeatedly, repeatedly offered to take out any footage. If I received unedited footage, I would remove the kids, but this is always ignored. They never mention this. Barnes and Rakeda just pretend that there's some weird nefarious thing involving his kids, and I don't give a fuck <laughs> about where his kids are staying. I don't want to see his kids frog, uh, amphibium, terrarium, or whatever the fuck. I want to see the Baldo bunker. I want to see the crack rock. I want to see the four-person bed with the cuck uh, fridge on the side. And I want to see the filth on the floor. That's it. Right, fellow parents? <laughs> just, just go around. I'm going to want you all to go around to any parents, you know, and be like, hey, you have kids. Would you sign a release form to let the internet, like people on a website called Kiwi Farms, uh, see your kids' bedrooms? Like, would you just sign a release form for that? Well, I mean, it was a police action, so you should sign a release form for that, right? That would be an insane proposition to most people. Then just say no. I don't understand this this, this rhetoric. If you don't want it out, instead of pretending that there's some invisible force preventing you from doing this, just say, I am a total fucking pussy. I went on and on about how everything should be public record for fucking years. I was willing to make money off of it when it was Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. I was willing to make money off of it when it was Rittenhouse. I was willing to make money off it off everybody else. But now that it's me, I don't want it. And I'm a hypocrite and I'm a pussy, but fuck you. I'm doing what I think is best for my family and so on and so forth. Just don't, why, why be a fucking coward? I don't understand. But maybe not to Josh. Like, I guess he doesn't, he doesn't think that way. And that's fine. Like, again, myopia. I just don't care. I don't care what your concerns are because you're a bad person. Like, that's the thing. It's like, I, I, I know that me asking for the footage annoys you, which is why I make sure to tell everybody that he could consent to the release of the footage at any second, and he chooses not to. Um, not only him, by the way, I don't think he's ever going to mention this. April Anderson, formerly April Imholt, is also able to consign to this, but because he is still living in, uh, in a polycule with a second woman who is like 12 years younger than him, uh, he has that woman down locked down too. And that's not ever coming out. So as long as uh, April Anderson could also is not party to either a criminal case or the, the, the um, custody case, she could consent to it and not violate any order. But that's not going to happen because uh, Daddy Baldo is not going to let it happen. Quote that from my hypothetical judge, Mr. Ricada, did you sign a release authorizing the state to share body cam footage with the layout of the home where your children sleep with an anonymous we uh, web board? that I'm reading has driven people to suicide through ridicule. Now, I've said over and over, I don't think Kiwi Farms is responsible for the suicides, but that's the news bite that an uninformed judge would be like looking into. Because it comes up every time. Only in every case is Kiwi Farms accused of having people commit suicide. I've defended this over and over and over again, so please don't come at me with your gayness. But that's what's gonna be the mantra because it's the mantra every time it comes up. So then, why, Mr. Kate? Which is a fair point, by the way. Information was a positive. Like I, I have no issues with this. I, I I understand his perspective on this. Like yeah, um, since you did request that this be sealed, it does seem like it would be a bad idea to then go around and consent to things that you asked specifically asked to be sealed to be released. Um, I understand that point. Um, but my again, my issue is. That you're pretending that you would just love for this to be public, but you are lying in doing so. And you're also pretending that April can't consent, which you can. Step for the safety of your children. And then, of course, here's my response. I'm sorry, Your Honor. An illustrated dog who fled the U.S. because of reasons and his army of lolly avatars who say the N-word a lot asked me to. Okay, so by the way, fl fled the U.S. because of reasons is retarded. Um, I did not flee the U.S., I moved to the Philippines, and actually, I, I moved to the, Australia for work, I moved to the Philippines for work, and then I moved to Ukraine because of the cost of living there, and then I moved to Serbia because it's also much cheaper to live there, and I work online. I also get $100,000 of tax exemption because I live as an expat. Um, I did not flee the U.S. There is no warrants for me anywhere, in any state, for any reason. 
Um, but the direct insinuation there, obviously, because of what he's saying about me and about the lolly avatars, is really obvious. And it's really I, I, my reply is is on the point with us. By the way, I'll just let him, him uh, say the it. absurdity, the absurdity of a parent signing a consent form for people to get more information about their children, and give it to the Kiwi Farms people is like they they don't even they don't even recognize like how that looks. And again. Under normal I just don't circumstances. Care. I just don't care. Like, I'm allowed to make data requests. I'm allowed to ask for shit. I'm a citizen of the United States of fucking America. And I and my companies, as American entities, are permitted to access and file requests for certain interesting matters of public arch of, of, of uh, public matters. So I don't understand the posturing. Isn't it just ridiculous that this Kiwi Farms property of Local LLC is impugning itself on a Minnesota affair and asking for body cam footage? What a ridiculous series of of uh, of nonsensical. It's just like I'm allowed. I'm allowed to. <laughs> I literally have a fucking right to do this. So I am because it's of interest to me. That looks insane. But when the state is looking at you going, we need to make sure you're a fit parent and, and before we can return your kids, be like, hold on, let me sign this release form. Here, we, I, wanna see, I want these other people to look at my house first and, and get the layout of it down. And, you know, see that stuff. That'd be, that'd be good, right? Like, that'd be, that'd be a responsible parenting. Just, no. No, it never would. But I'm just trying to help him out here. So then I said, uh, Josh, sometimes your quest to make other people look retarded makes you unable to see how retarded you are. This isn't a joke for me. And despite your gaggle of happy faggots, super good deductive reasoning, they've got it wrong. That's why my kids will be home soon. Now, granted, I said this on the third. Um, I was under the impression that my kids would be coming back on the 11th. But instead, they came back on the 7th. Now, a lot of people on the farms, et cetera, have said that my kids were like never coming back or be an extremely long time, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, now that they're coming back. They're like, oh, we always said they'd come back. Well, yeah, sure. That's I mean, the, I, I mean, from day one, day one, I remember that there were people who were saying who worked with Child Protective Services who said that in child custody cases, it is almost always better for a child to be returned to their home with supervision than to be put into the system. Um, people who, who are caseworkers came out and said, in no uncertain terms, that even if the parents are like crack addicts who are just completely dysfunctional, it is still somehow better for the kids to be in the custody of the fucking crack addicts than it is for them to be in the foster care system. So the state will almost always put children back in with their parents, even after repeated failed attempts to... Uh, to um, improve their parenting or get them off of drugs, they'll almost always go back because the foster care system is apparently a fucking nightmare and they don't want that. So unless there's like sexual abuse, if kids are being pimped out or whatever, then they, they might take them away permanently. But it has to be like an extremely appalling level of child abuse, like a deliberate, deliberate um, of uh, just using the child and, and harming the child in order for it to be permanently taken away. Um, there was never any doubt in my mind that the kids would, would return. Um, I'm a little, I admittedly, I'm a little bit surprised that they've come back so quickly. Um, but that just, I mean, that just shows how much the system wants to give them back to you. And all these people that he's crying about the evil Alicia sweep and the evil miss uh, Booker, whatever her name was, the guardian ad litem, all these people were advocating for the kids to come back. And he's still bad-mouthing them and, and saying what horrible, prejudiced people they are who lie under oath and are trying to make him look bad. They're still, even with that in mind, are still advocating for the children to return. Um, they're just asking for a little bit of supervision during the uh, for the sobriety. So I, I don't know. It's, a, it's such a bizarre point to make. Um, and then he says, like, uh, the for I don't know. The way that he tries to, like, say that oh, the forum was, is wrong. It's like he it really has he really has to prove his child custody his top concern in a child custody case is trying to make random internet commentators look wrong like are your priorities not completely fucked that's fine it, it you guys had no way to know i tried to tell you 
I tried to tell you guys that you had no way to know. And I tried to explain the Minnesota law that specifically said why you wouldn't be able to know and that it wasn't even your fault. I'm like, yeah, these long-term case plans or whatever that you, you see, those are not actually dictating the flow of the case. They're required by statute as parallel planning to what's going on. But there's other shit going on that you guys don't know about and I, I can't tell you. No one else can know. So when you saw these people like commenting, oh, this is what's actually happening and Nick's a liar. No, I, I really I was just telling you exactly what was happening, but I couldn't give you details about negotiations that were going on, about everything working on the parallel track that you don't get to know about. So I'm, I'm sorry, but I, I tried. Someone I tried. in his chat, Janelle Vigellis says, so this guy from Kiwi Farms is asking Nick to sign a release of things pertaining to his case so that the Kiwi Farms can gossip and blast him. Yes. To tell you. And to dispel rumors. <laughs> so anyway, I knew when my kids were coming home because I'm the one who's been doing it. A lot of these people out there still think that uh, Lady Raggetts and I were not submitting to drug tests or that we had some way figured out how to plan the drug tests on our own or something. No, none of that's true. We been complying with drug tests ever since the court asked us to do drug tests. The moment the court said, I need you to do drug tests, we're like, all right, cool. Now we didn't do a whole shitload of drug tests beforehand. You know why? Because they didn't ask us to. I don't know what else to tell you. The uh, there, there, I, I don't know precisely how to counter that, but there is some weird timeline. Uh, that's not they, – they, I want to say, and I could be wrong, but I want to say that Health and Human Services asked him to do drug tests, and he and Kayla con originally consented and then revoked their consent until it became a matter in the courts, which gave them additional time to get sober. I want to uh, say that's what it was. People are making big deals out of stuff that they've made up in their minds. And when I try and correct it and say, no, actually we've been – completely clean on all of our drug tests. <laughs> They're like, the, the first drug test I submitted, yes, I tested positive for alcohol. Uh, that's because I wasn't ordered to not drink alcohol yet. That, that's it. Then on the- uh, Bro, what a fucking excuse. Uh, there I was as a lush in the middle of a custody case and a, in a, in a criminal case. A criminal case that I paid what is it, a $50,000 bond for me and my wife so that neither of us would have to be sober during these criminal proceedings. I was plastered the first time, <laughs> the first night before my uh, first piss test for the child custody case. And, like, uh, to be clear, his losing his children and going to jail was not wake up enough for him to stop drinking. He had to wait until the very second the line was drawn in the sand by the court system. And then he goes, stupid Kiwi fags. Don't you realize I wasn't court ordered not to be a pathetic drunk anymore? I, w I didn't. I mean, I posted $50,000 bond so I wouldn't have to, to be sober. Idiots. Like, that's not really a defense. Fucking lunatic. 7th of June, the judge said, uh, no, no controlled substances, including alcohol. Although that's not in my written order. Played it safe. Uh, no controlled substances, including alcohol, and you submit to random testing. We were like, all right, cool. Of course. There you go. Done. Our first drug test was voluntary. We brought it to court because we had a hearing. Anyway, long story short, that's, uh, that's how that went. But people still believe that there's a different story out there. That it's like, no, no, no. Nick must not be doing this. Nick must not be doing this. Nick must not. Guys, come on. Like, I, I know that this is the internet and everything's fucking ridiculous, but it's not that ridiculous. Uh, some people are. And some people get like liar tattooed on their cheekbone or whatever, which I thought was bold. But some people on the internet do have like real lives that they get a little over sensationalized, which I've told you guys a lot. A lot of my life is way over sensationalized. And it's funny for a while until it's not, until it has real world impact. And this has had real world impact and the jokes had to stop. 
He acts like he acts like this is all fake. They found coke. They found a felony level, 25 grams, like a salesman's level of of coke in your room with your hot wife and your child tested positive. And he bemoans the rumor mills for sensationalizing his fucking lifestyle. Like, it's unbelievable to me that this still hasn't sank in. He takes no accountability. I didn't even really, like, I don't know. I didn't have any optimism for him, but really just sitting here thinking about it. Like, even now, he takes no accountability for anything, ever. Even, he's still, he's still blaming the rumor mills on the internet for his predicament and not the 25 gram coke rock in his fucking bedroom. Like, unreal. Getting Grow the fuck this, up. This thing. I knew my kids would be coming home soon. I knew actually the exact date. And again, someday I'll get to tell the story of how this, how this played out because how it played out should terrify you. Yeah, I know. You're not me. It should terrify you. <laughs> I remind you, several people reached out to the police with concerns. Mandatory reporters told the police they were concerned. Nick Ricada, there is a clip of him near blackout and drunk talking about how he has to drive his kids around in four hours it is impossible for someone that fucked up to get sober at all in four hours and there are people telling the police that they've seen Ricada dui and drop off their kids inebriated which aligns perfectly with what we've seen firsthand and these the, the it's not internet trolls it's your fucking preacher man it's not internet trolls it's it's health and human services and he's still going to be like it should terrify you there i was drinking and driving with my children in the back seat minding my own business when suddenly karen from from uh sunday school saw me she had always been looking for a reason to get me out of the picture and when she saw the open can of whiskey on my dashboard she called the police this could happen to any of you like, no, I'm not a fucking retard lush, Riketa. I'm not terrified of being falsely accused of being a retard fucking lush, because I'm not one. Because in this county, my case went fast. There's that kids involved. should terrify you. You have a right to a speedy trial, Riketa! Considering the absolute dearth of evidence and accusations that they had. I know the, the internet... What a defense! What a defense! So many people came out and said I was a dangerous alcoholic. There is no way that they could have processed all these different people saying that I was a danger to myself and my family. This is undue. How did they get probable cause with all these reports coming in? There's no way they there's no way they could have handled this many people saying that I was a fucking wreck. Come on, this should terrify all of you. I made a ton of accusations. Guys, the county doesn't accuse me of any of the stuff that you do. Which is why the kids are back home. So in light of this, this went fast. That should bother you. That should, that should worry you to your core if you're a parent. All right, here we go. Don't worry, there's more of this, this conversation coming. I'm not going to just cut it off here. And I'll make sure and include this so that you know I'm not leaving something out. Uh, consenting to the release of that footage would be one of the most irresponsible things a parent could do. The fact that you don't see that should indicate that you are terminally done, 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 done. Just a second. Just a second. Here, uh, get a new one here. See that? Should indicate fact that you don't see that should indicate that you're terminally connected to the internet and disconnected from reality. Peace, which people like tried to psychoanalyze peace. Guys, I've used peace as a send off forever. 
It's just really pathetic that you say peace as a send off, as if your monologue is done, and then you keep talking because you got to get the last word. There's no psychoanalysis there. It's just sad. So then Josh responds to me an hour later and he's like, he said peace. Why did he respond? I'm like, Josh, you send a message back. I, I, re I returned your message. <laughs> anyway, uh, so he says, then have April consent. So like, instead of me consenting, I'm supposed to have someone else consent by proxy to get around. Listen to what Josh is suggesting. I'm saying, hey, Josh, me doing this would violate like a court order. He says, have someone else do it by proxy. That won't violate It's not by either. proxy. It's not by proxy. I'm not asking you to do something through her. She has a right to consent to the release of the body cam footage. And she's not beholden to any court order about anything related to that. It's not by proxy. I'm offering her independently $1,000, by the way. That's still outstanding. So that's another fucking lie. Josh, listen to yourself, man. Homie, listen to yourself. I don't want to violate a court order. So you're suggesting I have someone else do it for me? That doesn't make it okay to do. I'm, a, I'm saying I permit, permit her to. Because he's the reason why she can. <laughs> what, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll have, because I have control over her, apparently. Yeah, you do. You for sure fucking do. This little lady's disappeared off the face of the internet. She was um someone who was like a com she was like a second the second member of the Silto Morning Show. She did like a morning broadcast. She was an active participant in your streams. And ever since this case, she still lives with you, but she's gone. She's not anywhere. Nobody hears from her. Hmm, that's weird. Like what should I should I like use my puppet strings or should I intimidate her? Like what give her a little bit of crack position here. Just just have her do it, then it's not you. Fucking insane. But okay. No, Josh, very reasonable. Then have April consent. You are the one who said the footage would exonerate you. I didn't actually say the footage would exonerate me. I believe, it's a little fuzzy, I believe I said that there are things in the footage that may help my case. They may actually be things that break the case. I don't know. Especially at the time I had said it, I had not seen the footage. I still haven't seen all of the footage. There's a shitload of it. But don't, this is one of those things where Josh takes something I said and he paraphrases it into a direct statement or accusation or whatever, but it isn't true. And it's the only reason I'm showing these messages is because he's done this multiple times now. And then people believe him and they say that he's credible and I'm not. Well, I'm showing you the messages because the credibility here is critical. Josh, if you, if you want to compare everything that I, that we discuss in this to my two posts, um, it's like one-to-one -one. there. There's very little, almost no reinterpreting what he's saying. I'm just, I'm just rewording it to be more concise and to be not the exact language that he used. Just put in an affidavit that I have said things about the search of my house that I haven't said. He put it in an affidavit to the court, trying to convince the court of something, but I didn't say those things. I think it was either him reading someone else's misinterpretation or he just made a mistake. I don't think it's malicious, to be very clear. I don't know what in particular he's talking about because I asked him for clarity on this point and he um, does not give me a response that meshes with my understanding of what I said. Uh, but there is a point where, I mean, he has said multiple times that he directly accused Health and Human Services Child Safety Supervisor Alicia Sweep of lying under oath directly. And that was something that I put into uh, my affidavit, and I think it made it into the motion as well. If there's something that I said in the affidavit that he disagrees with, and I think that he's complaining about one thing in particular, but I, I don't know for sure because he just refuses to say it, because um, it would contradict his, his public perception of what he's trying to accomplish in regards to spreading rumors about how the police are handling his case. I don't think Josh is malicious in any of this. I think he's myopic. I, I want the fucking body cam footage. For the information. Give her <laughs> consent to the release of the body cam footage and the horror will end. 
<laughs> the slobber mutt will be satiated. Why do you deny me? Why do you deny me the footage? The footage! <laughs> and that overrides basic reasoning. But I don't think he's maliciously doing it. But here we go. He says, you were the one who petitioned the court to seal discovery. Not true. Actually, I didn't petition the court to seal discovery. The protective order on discovery in my uh, civil case was proposed, guess what, by the county attorney. And my lawyer and Lady Rackett's lawyer independently agreed to it. It's in the transcript on your site. If you just read it, it's right there. They did it in court. And it's also in the order. So again, the, you normally would have no way of knowing this. Now you actually have a way of knowing this. You just didn't take the time to know it, which is fine, except you're, now you're accusing me of doing this stuff. No. No. Anyway, insinuating everyone you don't like is a pedophile is an ugly and ineffective tactic. Well, Josh, funny thing. I didn't insinuate anybody that I'm not like. Dude, such a fucking sleazy comeback. What, what do you mean by lolly avatars? What do you mean by you fled the U.S.? Put those two things together. Like, this is, this is 100% of everything he does all the time. He takes this fucking dipshit poisonous uh, concept, and then he coats it in this duplicitous kind of roundabout way of putting it, and then he insinuates it heavily, and if you try to grasp it and say, grasp it and say, you're full of shit, it slips through your fingers like jelly-like slime. Oh, I did not say that precisely. It doesn't work. I'm not a fucking judge. I'm not an attorney. I don't have to prove. I don't have to. I don't have to quote you verbatim to prove something. I can show you what you said and what that means to an average ordinary person. And sure, it may not be a fucking defamation claim. I may not be able to sue you for it, but I know what you're saying. And the fact that he's so fucking spineless, so fucking spineless, as if as if I'm a hankering to go after him for defamation or something. Just be a man for once. Take accountability for your fucked up life, your fucked up family, and take accountability for the shit you say. Just for once. Just one fucking time. For, for the benefit of everybody. For our sanity. Stop being such a lying cunt for one fucking second. He's just gonna, literally going to say lolly avatars, a bunch of lolly avatars on that Kiwi Farms, and then not, and then, then cry and whinge. That's not what I said. You can't quote me directly on that. I only implied it roundabout. Fuck you. Liking is a pedophile here. But Josh does this all the time. Go through the list of people that Josh used to like and who he doesn't like now. And look at how many of them he has called a pedophile. It's one of the most common words in his dictionary. This is an amazing case of projection from Josh. But notice in this conversation, I didn't call anyone a pedophile. Josh did. I mean, what, are you talking about Vito? Vito the pedo? He is a pedophile. Mac Carson? He is a pedophile. Who are you complaining about that, I, that I've defamed by calling him a pedophile? That's not a pedophile. Like, there's nobody I can think of that, that could whinge. Josh called somebody pedophiles here. Tried to make me do it, but I didn't do it. Oh, my God. I said army of lolly avatar. What a pussy. Yeah? But I didn't call them pedophiles, Josh. Do you just have a bunch? There's just a bunch of lolly avatars. I also said you were an illustrated dog. Like... It, it was just a, is a pithy joke. Get over it. But anyways, insinuating everyone you don't like is a pedophile is an ugly and ineffective tactic. Well, Josh, maybe you should have a helping of that sandwich. Uh, he says, I'll mm. remind you, it was your cocaine and your child testing positive for cocaine who put you in this situation. Those are Joshua Moon's words. I haven't made any comment about this. I'm only reading them for completeness. And I'm not... <laughs> This dude, this dude will die 
I don't know when he'll die. He could be in the next few years. It could be as an old, old 100. He could live to 500 years old. But when, regardless, there will come a day where he expires. And on that day, be it next week, next year, 10 years from now, or as a 510-year-old man, there will never be a day where this guy takes accountability for his actions, ever. I'm going to make any comment about that now. I have a pending criminal matter. Uh, he says, I and my forum do not share responsibility. It's my forum. It's mine. <laughs> Josh speaking on behalf of the forums again. Well, this is just rich. It's good. Josh, I'm glad you're finally coming around to this because for years you denied all of this. Like you, you I mean, this is my forum. I own it. What's the confusion? Acting on behalf of the forum. You like you're acting on behalf of you and the people do it themselves, but yes. I guess it's collective now. I mean it, it, what, what an asinine point to make. He's desperately trying to say like everything that happens is inherently my fucking fault, but it is my forum. I am liable for things that it does, but I don't oversee every there's like twelve thousand posts made a day. Believe it or not, I don't agree with everything that happens on it. So then um, I said, you're the king of insinuating people are pedophiles. I didn't insinuate anything. I said, are you having a retard action? Because I said, lolly avatars. I said, also, like normal, you paraphr your paraphrase of what I said is not precise. I said, peace, Josh. I hope you and your pedophiles have a good day. Josh called them pedophiles. I didn't. But I'll oh, he's, he's, so, he's so fucking clever. You got, he's just so smart and clever. His word plays are just so like, damn, dude, this guy is so fucking smart. <laughs> This dude, he he thinks that he's the smartest fucking man that has ever lived. Moniker, that's that's on him. So then he says, "You are not as smart as you think you are." It's <laughs> fine. I hope I'm not as smart as I think I am. Uh, so then, uh, today at 1:03 p.m., I said, "By the way." Very curious where you think I alleged police planted anything. And this is getting into the meat of the matter. Because I noticed that Josh said that I said this, but I, I didn't say that. Actually have specifically avoided saying that. Let me replay that. I didn't hear that. Josh said that I said this, but I'm very curious where you think on 3 p.m. I said, by the way, very curious where you think I alleged police planted anything. And this is getting into the meat of the matter. Because I noticed that Josh said that I said this, but I, I didn't say that. Actually have specifically avoided saying that. I haven't said it at all. Oh, did you catch that? And I'll, I'll replay that. Instant replay. We did, and I said this, but I meat of the matter. Because I noticed it. Josh said that I said this, but I, I didn't say that. Actually have specifically avoided saying that. Dot, dot, dot. I haven't said M dash. it at all. I haven't said it at all. I specific. Oh, did you, did you mean to say that in your muckraking and rumor milling to try and seed as much doubt regarding the authenticity of the police findings that you very specifically in your public appearances and discussions with other people avoided directly stating that they might have planted the cocaine while trying to insinuate that as much as possible? Oh, no, no, no. Sorry, I didn't say that at all. I didn't say that at all. It's not that I specifically avoided saying this one specific accusation while trying to say everything except that. I didn't say that at all. M dash didn't say that. Uh oh. Uh oh. You may have a tacit admission there. Don't talk about your cases live on, on live stream, bro. When people insinuated that I meant it, I said I didn't say that. I have clearly not, I've specifically not said this. If I'm wrong, please, somebody let me know. Because uh, I'm pretty sure I've never actually said this. And I haven't seen anybody find it yet. I said, you put it in a motion supported by affidavit. Are you sure? You didn't just paraphrase something incorrectly and assume what I meant. I'm pretty sure that's what happened. Or maybe you misread a retarded summary from a forum post. Who knows? So Josh said, you literally said that Alicia Sweep by name lied under oath. Yes. Yes, I did. And that did happen. It was not during the search. 
however. But Alicia Sweep did lie under oath. In fact, when we left the court hearing, I walked right up to her and I said, you lied under oath and you know it. I walked right up to her. I pointed at her. I said it to her face. Um, I'd be careful how you word that because that sounds like intimidation. You get off the stand testifying. This, this enraged, wet brain retard runs up to you and points a fucking finger in your face and says, you're a fucking liar, you fucking bitch. I will say it every single day. Alicia Sweep lied under oath in Candy, Ohio County. 100% she did that. He's super, okay, so he, he got caught. He did say this. And even though he may wish to not have said this, he's going to try and like hype up his own honesty. I absolutely 100% admit to this thing, which is in court documents that I can't ever take back. I will 100% using 100% of my honesty, confess to this one thing. So as to give credibility to when I deny other things. I also said the problem with all of this is that when there is no other witness than you and the government agent, you have two options. You have to live with the lie because no, no one's punishing her or you have to testify and testifying to counter the lie what, does two things. One, it pits your credibility against the government worker. Now, the government worker who works with the CPS investigator all the time or the, the judge who works with the CPS investigator all the time and doesn't know you at all. Where do you think that credibility default is going to go? Towards the, towards the CPS investigator. So I would have to go take the stand and say, no, Alicia Sweep lied about this thing that didn't happen. And then I would similarly be opening myself up to cross-examination when I have a pending criminal matter. You just have to eat shit sometimes. I, I Yeah. Yeah, you do. Because you fucked up. Yeah, I mean, I understand what he's saying. I get why he just has to eat shit, but, I mean, whose fault is that? I guess it's not the police's fault, because I went out of my way to specifically avoid saying this one thing that could be used against me. I mentioned this with less specificity, but that's the way the system works. Sometimes you don't have the opportunity to call out a lie. Lies go by in court all day. I pray you're never in a position where those lies impact your children. I really do because it fucking sucks, man. You're powerless. You have to sit there. You, by the way, you can't like your lawyer can't object. She lied. How, how do you show they lied? Well, you either have to get a witness up there or you have to have a recording. The recording has to be introduced by a witness. They have to be cross-examined. Sometimes you just have to eat shit. I mean, anyway. the correct answer to your question, in case you're actually wondering, uh, is don't get into the situation to begin with. This is not simply, if this was simply a matter of child custody based off unsubstantiated reports inflicted on Ricada by the government, I would feel bad for him. There was cocaine in the house. Nick was a user. He used on stream for months. It, like, you could see a visible mental and physical decline in him. So, But he's still... He's, it's just, it's, it's so weird to me because I am 31. I'm turning 32 this year. And Riketa is a man who is almost, I want to say 10 years my senior. I think he's 40 or 41 himself. So this guy has 10 years on me. And he's acting like this. He's doing these things. He's endangering his kids. And then when caught out on it in a way that is undeniable, to the average person just looking in at what they're saying, what they have as evidence, the para it wasn't just a coke rock. It was like paraphernalia. They found ways for, for him to, to imbibe it. And he's going to look at that and say, it's not my fault. It's everybody else's. And fuck you for having an interest in this case when I made, when literally in the most hypocritical way possible. And this is a really interesting thing because it's like most people can never be hypocritical in the way that Riketa is being hypocritical. Most people never don't have a career off commenting on high profile cases, but he's insinuating that I am in the wrong for wanting access to footage that would have been a heyday or a huge, a huge earner for him in his heyday. Back when Ricardo was on top, if there was body cam footage of, you know, of 
what's his face? Uh, Johnny Depp's house with Amanda Heard's shit on his mattress. We would be watching Riketa smugly laughing, drinking whiskey, looking in the camera in that little, that coy way that he does, like saying cheers to, some, to a $50 super chat about someone's dead grandma with a woman's shit on his screen. But yet, when it's him in his house, and I get it. I mean, I don't want, uh, it's humiliating. But he's going to act, but it, it's it's like one thing, again, it's one thing if he just came out and said, it would look really bad for me. And I don't think, you know, I don't, I don't want to even risk that something might come out that um, is embarrassing to the kids. And it's just not in my interest. And I refuse. And I don't want April to consent. And I don't want Kayla to consent. It's, it's, it's one thing to be honest and just admit it. But he can't even do that. He has to pretend that there's nothing on the footage while simultaneously doing literally everything and making every argument conceivable why it should never be released. And chimping out when I find a way to get it that doesn't involve him at all. Because now his lie is that he can't consent to it and April can't consent to it, which he absolutely can and has no reason not to besides him not wanting her to or her not wanting to. And he then has to find some way to make the rumor mill way look bad which is what this all is he's trying to explain how i'm uh either wrong or lying and it's like i'm sorry bro but i'm not the one that told all your fucking friends um the things that you did to get them saying the things that they are so here we go uh 100 so here we go he says if you want to point out a specific paragraph in the affidavit you have an issue with you can but you're very obvious about what you're doing <laughs> obvious uh josh i i don't know where you think i said this but i didn't say it and he he's done this there exists no subtext there is no implications about what he's saying only the honest direct truth with no catch 22 is possible Riketa, as a lawyer only knows how to speak in plain english it's before it's just like a <laughs> josh so ludicrous when i talk to him he'll say what do you want me to redact or uh retract or change. oh he's gonna do this fucking lie again what a fucking piece of shit or make a statement on i say i'm gonna get that nigga mark my fucking words i'm getting that body cam footage. <laughs> you're gonna spin this fucking lie again motherfucker i'm getting it swiggity swooty <laughs> i don't want you to delete anything i don't want you to censor anything and then he'll say nick tried to get me to censor something or nick tried to get me to change something no no, I never said those words. I never said those exact words. I only heavily implied it and implications don't exist. I can all, I'll message you in the shower for two fucking hours, but there's only the exact language used. Like, bro, it doesn't fucking work. This is not a court. Most people listening to this have at least a hundred IQ. They are able to understand these things. It's just like, who does this work on? You can't, I'm not your fucking kids and wife. My audience is not your fucking kids and wife. They have no reason to trust you. They can look at the logs and say, oh, he's being a, a piece of shit. I understand this implicitly by, by looking at them. They don't assume the best of you. They're not your kids. They're not going to be like, oh, well, dad wouldn't lie to me. Uh, they're going to look at you and say, oh, this is a fucking shyster lawyer. Everything that he says has a, a double entendre to it. I've done that. It's amazing how many times he has personally accused me of that. When I do something like this, I'm saying, he, dude, he, you're saying something that's not true. He's doing it constantly. If you don't understand, the implication here is that he's trying to trip me up and get me to admit that I lied about something in an affidavit, which is signed under perjury. That's what he's trying to accomplish. The issue is, is that I didn't lie about anything in the affidavit. It's all true to the best of my knowledge. Um, so like what I'm saying is, bro, I know it's your fucking dude. I'm not fucking retarded. I'm a fucking adult. Like I get that you're trying to trip me up on your on your fucking out on the affidavit, so you can say, "Oh, he knowingly lied," which I didn't, so that he could get it thrown out, so that there wouldn't be a recording at the omnibus hearing, which is what he's trying to do. He's trying to get more records squelched because it will make him look bad. It's so fucking obvious, but he has the audacity to sit here on live and pretend that's not what he's doing. Like, I don't understand how you can even pretend that because it's so fucking obvious to anybody that has any fucking clue about what's going on. But he, I just, I, that's, this is one of the big things and I've said this before and I'll say it again. 
One of the most shocking things that you'll see when you deal with people like this is that they will lie to you about things you don't even understand why they would lie about. People, and they're the hardest people to deal with because the average person has like a baseline level of trust in their fellow man. And when someone says something, you just kind of assume, well, they don't have any reason to lie. And that's how society works. But then you have people like this who have like a uh, personality disorder who just lie constantly. And it's like, it, it fucks up everything because your base instinct, like people don't lie unless they have a reason to, goes out the window. You have to automatically assume that he's lying about everything just because, just because he gets a delight from lying sometimes. Like just because he, he, he feels like he's, he's smarter than people when he makes them believe things that aren't true. In this case, he has a motivation that's pretty obvious, but it, it it's, it's very difficult to deal with somebody who lies second nature because, um, like I probably, I've at least doubled the time of this video, even though I'm trying to ignore, let things slide as much as possible because the time that it takes to like point out that somebody's lying is always, always, always more time than it takes to actually lie. It's so much more effort to undo a lie than it is to tell one. And that's why people who are chronic pathological liars, get away with so much bullshit because it's just so much effort to try and, and entangle somebody and, and uh, defeat them at, at what they're actually saying. Well, what do you want me to change it? No, I'm just letting you know, it's not right. That's literally it. Do whatever the fuck you want with it. So here he goes. Uh, everything I've said in the affidavit was true to the best of my knowledge and ability. Yeah, that's fine. But your knowledge and ability are lacking. Sorry, Josh. And then he does this thing. He's like, when he tries to message me and I call him out on shit and he, or he doesn't get what he wants with his gambits. He goes, well, I'm only texting you about this matter. So it benefits you. I have reached out the fact that we're not friends and I don't like you. And, uh, I openly imply things about you and your forum. Um, but I reach out for your benefits so that you may know better. It's like, it, it didn't work. Back in the day, it didn't work with the shower text. I know what you're doing. You're not reaching out for my fucking benefit. <laughs> you, you're not reaching out a friendship stick to, to impart knowledge. You're doing something. So then uh, we go back to me responding to his Alicia Sweet thing. I said, she did. That was not during the warrant execution. It wasn't. It was after. Okay. I said, I'm just trying to tell you that I have not alleged the police planted anything, which I have not. You misunderstood or read someone's summary who misunderstood. Okay, right, so give me a second, it, we'll go on. Sorry it, to do this this way. This is um directly after, by the way, my post where I talked about the sheriff's thing. So immediately after that, he messages me to clarify that he never alleged any wrongdoing by anyone who just so happened to be there on the day that the search warrant was executed and people had body cam footage on. But you know, there might have been other people lying at other times and people trying to to hinder him and people before the search who were lying about things to get probable cause. But I never said anything about people on the day with the body cam footage on. That never happened. I never said anything about that that could be dispelled by the release of the body cam footage. Just letting you know right now that nothing released by the body cam footage would dispel any rumors that I've created. It was always before or after the search warrant execution. Okay, nothing happened on that day. Everything was fine and above board. The search warrant was executed perfectly and nothing bad happened. Just so you know, Josh, I love you. Just so you know, I wish you a million dollars. I wish you a million hours of body cam footage from other people. Nothing happened that specific day that the, the police uh, could dispel by releasing the body cam footage. Okay, just just between us. Thanks, bye. Love you. Like, oh, damn, bro. The complexity and layers of Sir Baldo's attempts at dispelling rumors. He really is a Machiavellian king who can get away with anything because he's just so clever in how he ravels his tales. No, he's not. He's not so blatant. A child could understand what he's doing. <laughs> he's really smart. Trust me. Here we go. I, I said, you misunderstood or read someone's summary who misunderstood. I may have suggested multiple times over the years that no one should consent to a search because you don't know if police will even inadvertently place something. So, but I've made no public accusations regarding the planting of evidence. So maybe someone misinterpreted my explanation that police have to prove that I possessed what they alleged and there are facts which make this issue complicated. There are. I said, Alicia Sweep lied, stating that I prevented her from accessing the bedroom and closing the door. That was a lie under oath. That was a lie under oath. A CPS worker named Alicia Sweep in Candy, Ohio County, Minnesota lied under oath 
in the case against me. There's no way around it. That happened. Yeah. I, I wish there was some way around it. <laughs> the system is that there was no way to counter the lie without testifying. Testifying would have been a bad move at the time. Very true. Very true. So Josh responds, look, mate. It's Australian now, apparently. Uh, you're true, a pathological liar. On every level except physical, I'm an Aussie. Josh. And you are blatantly engaged in manipulation against everyone you talk to at all times for no apparent or good reason possible. And let me just, let me just go ahead and say this. If someone is accused of always manipulating people for no reason, I'll humbly suggest they're not actually manipulating people. Um, or they're a pathological liar who, like, again, th this is also like a, a lie. <laughs> people who have pathological lies uh, or liar or whatever the fuck, anti-personality disorder, they lie about the most mundane shit that they do not benefit from lying in a way that can be disproved about things that don't fucking matter and that nobody would have any reason to lie about. I don't know why they'll lie to you about what they did that day. Like someone, you know, you could be talking about to somebody like this and you could say like, Hey, what'd you do? And they said, Oh, I went to the fair. I'm like, oh, did you have fun? Yeah. I went, had lots of fun. And then they didn't go to the fair. They stayed at home and played a computer game. Well, why did you say that you went to the fair? I didn't. They'll say, and it's like the most clusterfuck conversation ever. What the fuck do you mean you didn't say that you went to the fair? Why would you why would you lie about that? And then why would you lie about lying? And they're like, I don't know what you're talking about. That's just what they do. They lie continuously for no fucking reason about things that don't matter and that nobody should have any reason to lie about. And it just it lights up some part of their brain that is inexplicable to a normal person, which is why the lies work to begin with. They just don't get it. But it happens. I mean, you can believe whatever you want. I'm not here to change that. I, I can't. I can't. Im I can't manipulate you into believing me. If I could, I'd be way richer. All right. Here's the crazy thing. Josh can never figure out what the manipulation is. It's just that what I tell him doesn't fit his story up here. If it That's wrong. Like he will lie for no reason whatsoever. Um, the first thing with um, the forum, he'll constantly message me and just say X, Y, Z on the forum is wrong. And he's very heavily implying that if I were a good person or a friend or whatever, I would help him correct those false narratives. Either by some sort of direct moderator action or just by posting in his defense. But he's trying to like subplant this, this thought into me um, that could cause an action. And then... If I confront him on that and I just say, like, I'm not going to post in your defense. I'm not going to delete things. He gets defensive and says, well, I didn't ask you to, which is true, I guess. But it's really heavily indicated by what you're saying and the fact that you keep fucking saying it and that you don't let it go and that you do it week after week. Uh, I, it's just like, number one, that's wrong. And then the second one, you're trying to you're trying to trip me up so that I say something that you can use. Um, to try and combat the motion to allow recording. You're trying to say that I lied under oath and I didn't. Um, like, I can very succinctly describe what you're trying to say. Doesn't fit Josh's story up here. He can't fathom how it happens. But Josh is retarded. I love him. He's a lovable retard, but he is. His life is not a normal person's life, and that is fine but it makes him have trouble identifying with other people in real situations. All those things are like, like just the way he talks about people in general is always duplicitous. Like it's always underhanded. He says like, Josh is retarded, but I love him. He lives a very shitty existence, but that's okay. <laughs> like, so, like, I, I don't know. Can I, can I whip that up? Can I turn that on him and say like, Ricada is a lush. Which he can be. There's no law against that. His child tested positive for cocaine. Happens to the best of us. He lost custody. But, you know, so did Ralph. <laughs> I mean, like, come on. How smug can you possibly fucking be? Well, like, just, just, be, just for the love of fucking God, be a man and say what you want to say without apologizing for it. Or, or, like, pretending that you're being nice while you do it. Just can't.
I just can't. And that's okay, chat. <laughs> that's okay. Some people are just fucking retards, chat. Some people are just fucking liars. But you know what? That's just how it is. And that's okay. Over and over. And that's shown through. Every, it's actually kind of a joke on the forum itself. He just doesn't get it. Because he doesn't live in the world that other people do. He lives in a world of nastiness, of crazy, you didn't read the forum. people, of, of antics that go beyond the normal bounds of human comedy. He doesn't live like, uh, I mean, he doesn't even live like me. And my, I'm ridiculous. His is more so. But all right. Um, for the record, I have never been charged with any crime. I have never endangered a child. I have never done hard drugs, Nick. I live in a different country. But everything that I do, above board, perfectly fucking normal. Don't do any weird degenerate shit. I just stream to the internet and live someplace outside the U.S. I don't know how that's uh, weirder than banging crack rock fucking two bitches calling your your the wife your wife and the mother of your children someone whose body was destroyed by pregnancy and uh letting your your eight-year-old do coke i i don't i don't know how how you could even possibly attempt to internally r rationalize that thought he goes uh yeah apparently manipulating everyone all the time Nothing you tell me will ever be taken at face value. And in this instance, it's just another obvious lie that makes me roll my eyes. Notice what Josh hasn't done. He has not found. He has not found. I know what he's going to say. The reason why I don't tell him what he's lying about, he says he fucking knows what he's lying about. I'm not writing these so that they can be read on the internet. I'm writing these to him. Riketa, I know that you're a liar. You know that you're a liar, and you know that I know that you're a liar. There's no point delineating over the facts and talking about what you're lying about, because I know that you're a fucking liar, and you know that, and I know that you know that. <laughs> so let's cut to the fucking chase. Let's get to what I actually have interest in. Let's, uh, let's summarize this more concisely, because I got other shit to do. The instance where I have said what he says I said. Uh, he says, I know you think it's very, very clever to continuously imply things. So you can backtrack what you said immediately. Like that time you were talking to some blonde woman and basically said the government plants evidence all the time. The government plants for evidence all the time. They do. It's news story after news story after news story. We find it over and over and over. And he says, uh, when she directly asked to confirm if you were saying that happened in your case, which was an obvious follow-up because it was plain that you were implying that I wasn't. I was simply saying why you don't consent to searches ever. He says, you backtracked it immediately. I said, I didn't say that. I've never said that because I didn't and have never said that. It's amazing. He's like, you told the truth. Yes, Josh. He's like, see, so your truth was a lie because you meant it to be. No, Josh, you needed it to be but I never said that. That's the whole point of all of this. He says, this. Uh, you do this continuously. You insinuate through gritted teeth. Oh shit, I didn't get the more. I'll read it to you. The more says, I mean, maybe I'm hiding something. You insinuate through gritted teeth that XYZ happened and it was a knowingly malicious and deliberate effort by a state actor to accomplish some evil deed at your expense. Then when pressed, you look away from the camera and say, well, I didn't say that. Except I don't do that. It's, again, it's amazing because for his thing to be right, his premise is that requires me to- Shout out to Joshua Mendoza. Hi, Noel. Can't wait to watch this and Maddie tomorrow. How you doing, brother? Do the thing that he needs me to do. It's very circular. I have to be making the implication to then deny the implication. I'm denying the implication because I didn't make it. If it if 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 it was one or a couple people, you know, dense who were confused about what was being said, maybe that would work. But it's not. It's Robert Barnes, Viva Fry, it's Camelot, Chrissy Meyer, it's all these people who are direct acquaintances of you who seem to have this misunderstanding that the police did things that you heavily imply 
in conversation when discussing your case, but then deny when it comes to a yes or no question. Um, if it wasn't something that you were doing, and maybe it's not, maybe it's not, it doesn't have to be, maybe, maybe it's not his direct intention to create that rumor, but the rumor exists. That's all I'm saying. So anyway, uh, he says, I'm not one of your children. You can't Rimble lie to me. Oh, oh, dude, my children are way better lie detectors than you are, Josh. He said, Josh, the hardest thing for you to realize one day is that I don't. So please go back and find me actually accusing the police of planting anything in my case. Now, Josh ran to the forums again right after I sent him this. And he said, Nick dared me, dared me to do it. No. I he did. Dare you how? To do anything. How? Jesus how? Christ. And what? How am I supposed to interpret this? Please go find something. Like, if that's not a direct incitement to go do something, i.e., a dare, what the fuck is? You're asking me to. Okay, I will, fucker. <laughs> Watch me. Please go find it. You say, he says in his affidavit, sworn under oath. To be truthful, that I said this, but I didn't say it. Like, please go find it. He says, I will. I intend to compile a list of every time that you implied that someone from the police department did something wrong to you. I do. <laughs> Knock yourself out, I guess. Uh, you've been doing it since your first stream out of jail. He did. I'm going to have to do this anyways because it's the only way to justify getting the body cam footage released without your consent and you've got April locked down. She yes. does. Shackled to the floor, unable to move. She's not even she's not even a real person. She has no will, Josh. And don't even try that. You've been lying about who you were and what you stand for since the first time you cut on a fucking camera. I think you meant put True. on. Got on? I'm not sure. Uh, Cut on is how you say it in Florida, okay? Look, my phone fucks up all the time. I'm not criticizing him. I said, no, that's, have you never heard of cutting on something? You cut on the TV. The motherfucker don't know English. That's how you, that's how you, you cut on the TV. You cut on the phone. Cut on the webcam. What are you talking about? I said, nope. Other people project onto me. That's not my fault. That being said, I wish you well in your endeavors in regards to finding those accusations. It's true. I wish him well. I wish him well. So here we go. Let's get the, the rest of this shit. Oh, boy. I know this is wild fun, guys. Is that the end? That was the end of the conversation. Oh, my God. There's this more. Get very meta here because there's screenshots in this one. I know this is it's wild almost fun. almost over. Um, and we'll get on with the, the case update uh, when we're done with this Josh conversation. We will. So here we go. So finish with the accusations. There's only one, one screenshot that matters because the other two are you've already seen. It's just a repeat of the earlier conversation. We'll skip those in a second. He says, thanks. And he said, Josh, are you lying intentionally or just chronically imprecise? And then I screenshotted his post. He says, King Baldo has again reached out <laughs> through a system of ropes and pulleys to declare the following. Here's what he paraphrased into. He has never said the police did anything wrong during the execution of the search warrant. That's actually not what I said, and that's not true. Yes! 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 <laughs> this entire sit-through has been worth it. I believe I've said they've made mistakes. I haven't said anything about what they are. But I did not say they haven't done, uh, that they did nothing wrong. I just said they didn't. I never said they planted evidence. Chat, chat. Let's let's um let's do a quick poll arena right here. Do you believe that the Candy Ohio County Sheriff's Department did something wrong? Might have done something wrong during the execution of their search warrant based off Ricada's. Last statement, question mark. Vote one for yes. Vote two for no. Let's create a poll here. Oh, no. my th I used an apostrophe. The poll is ruined. I'm going to consider all votes to be yes. Do not vote if you have a contrary opinion to what I'm, 
what I'm trying to do. <laughs> this is what Josh has done. He has shifted the language and moved the goalposts to make his lies version into a form. My lie. Mother. Dude. Him, him trying to turn this and be like, he's the one that's actually lying. Uh, no, I, I have, um, oh God, what's that fancy word for when you have like divine right? Uh, providence. I have providence and I speak from the chair. Everything I say is true. Because he, he can't be, he had all these messages. He had them, but his paraphrase is imprecise. And it's really important because again, then post, post on my fucking website. Oh my God. I lost my point. I clicked. I clicked in such a rage. I lost my website. Post then just make a fucking account. Why are you messaging me? Stop fucking messaging me. I don't want to talk to you. I am not want to speak to you for like two years now. And you keep messaging me, please. Just make a fucking account. I don't understand. Of ropes and police to declare the following. Did okay, I already went past this. This is what John to make his lies version into a form of truth. Because he he can't be. He had all these messages. He had them. But his paraphrase is imprecise. And it's really important because again. Josh put under oath a swearing that it was true and correct, that I said a thing that I haven't said. If I wrote it in the fucking affidavit, it's true to the best of my he knowledge, or can't Through his lawyer. I oh, didn't do that to him. I sent him a message. But he did this, and then when Dude, I... he's he's like, he sounds, he, the way he's like, and he's like, there I was, talking to my friend. Joshua Moon, with nothing but love in my heart. And I just wanted to tell him things as a f f f friend. And he wrote to the government under oath lies about what I told him. <laughs> chat, it's not fair. Not fair, chat. Why would he do this to me? Say, hey, John, I didn't say that. Now he's like, he's changing it and he's changing the language that he used it's amazing so he goes uh search warrant on his premises and both dares me and wishes me luck in finding evidence to the contrary to support a petition to the candy Eye county sheriff's department i said this is not what i said and i also didn't dare him i did wish him luck or True. i think I, said, I wished him well i wished him well i didn't even wish him luck very imprecise josh how embarrassing all right here we go Let's get to the next one. I'm going to skip the screen grabs. There's, this is the last one. Okay? Last one, chat. So we can, we can stop the suffering soon. Here we go. Guess I'll get the, I got to get the whole thing just so people back to where we were. He says, can you give me a quote then? What, like what? You're, are you a newspaper? You're going to publish a quote? I said, I, <laughs> I mean, you're arguing that what I posted was incorrect. Give me a fucking quote about what you want in the fucking post, Nick. You're the one complaining. <laughs> I'm not fucking asking you for a, for a comment. You're the one complaining about what's on the fucking site. Again, just tell me what you want. <laughs> what the fuck do you want? Stop this bullshit. I also never dared you to do anything. Then he puts a screenshot, please go back and find me actually accusing the police of planting anything in my case. He said, I'm literally asking. I'm not taunting or daring you. I know what I didn't say. If I messed up somewhere and alleged that, I would want to know. We both have an interest in that allegation. So look, man, I've literally only ever contacted you for your own information. You That's have such bullshit. It's such bullshit. Such a fucking lie. Every, not a single time ever. In years, has Rakeda messaged me in a normal fucking context? Not once has he said, like, here's what I'm doing today. Here's a picture of my activities. Hey, how are you doing today? 
Is this true about what are you up to? How are you feeling about this? There's no conversation between us that's like for your information or like friendly. It's always like, so I've seen um, some comments on the Kiwi Farms about uh, hedonism too. Just want you to know that it's all bullshit. Just so you, just so you know, Josh, it's bullshit. All that stuff that they're writing, it's bullshit. And it's like, then over time, it's all not bullshit. You're hot wifing. You're with the M Holds. You got fucking what's her face, April, living at your fucking house. You got twenty five grams of crack rock in your bedroom. And he's, just, he's, just, and it's like all those conversations where he just tried to like, hey buddy, hey buddy, how you doing? You want to talk about these fucking posts on the Kiwi Farms? I don't like. It's like, it's all, it's all vindicated. They're, they're all, all everything that he's messaged me about to complain about has been vindicated over the passage of time. And these fucking conversations are gonna go down vindicated in the next three goddamn months. It's just so obvious. I don't know. I'm subjecting myself to it because it's like the. But normally, when when he's when he's just like ranting about the form, I don't even listen to it. It's like with with um Ralph or whatever. Like I don't care about what you people think about me. But he is the hot topic, so let's uh, rant and rave, chat. Times that I'm demanding a retraction or correction, I always tell you no. Trying to convince someone else to correct the record for an internet audience is nonsensical. So there you go, Joshua Moon. I don't like doing that. I really don't. But dude. The guy just fucking lied about what I said. He lied. <laughs> he lied. He's very specifically taking issue with um with the, the dare part. And it's like with the we. It's like, does it benefit you to be such a such a pedant? Hey, if you want to be better understood, maybe you should just say what you what you want to say instead of doing this roundabout fucking implication bullshit that never fucking worked because you're not smart enough to pull it off. And the people that you talk to are aware that you're a fucking shyster liar that lies constantly. Maybe you should maybe just be direct. <laughs> Number happens. About what I said in his affidavit. That he filed with the court. Which he couldn't provide a paragraph out and of that I'm he like, had issues with, I didn't by the say way. that. He's like, ha you did. It's like, where? Sorry. Sucks to suck. <laughs> all right, that is the Baldo segment. I'm sure we're all relieved that that is over. Um, Cool. So yeah, uh, since um, the topic is out there, if you have clips from any stream from a high profile, reputable commentator or attorney from LawTube who has stated that he believes that Rakeda, especially during the time frame of the, of the search warrant, that the cops did something to hurt Rakeda, did something improper, please help substantiate the, the report that we're gonna make to help request the footage. Um, either by DM or post better yet post it on the forum. I read through the thread. So that's the gambit. He's upset that I have found a reasonable avenue for requesting something that he desperately wants to conceal um, for no reason other than his own benefit. And like I said, if I can just get one cop's badge cam and footage of the room in particular, make sure everything's above board. That's all I'm asking for. I don't need 20 hours of footage from every cop and every person who was there. I don't need to see every room in the house. I don't need to see the kids. Just want to see the living space, kitchen, bedroom, and uh, that one cop. And I don't think that's unreasonable. Um. Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CACA Lofa. Remember to like and subscribe.